my function don't jiggle jiggle, it folds. All right, fold is confusing. Let's say you have a function f, a, and b, and that returns a plus b. We're not going to need to type it, as in, you know, explain what, what types and whatever, but f12 will be free. Now, I could fold. Now, you need to choose fold left or fold right. I'll explain what this is going to be. Let's fold left. Fold left, then you, the first variable is your function. The first variable, the first argument is your function. Then an accumulator, let's call it accumulator because it's helpful in that case as we're doing sums, and then a list. So my list, I'm going to use a range, all of the integers from 1 to 10. I'm assuming this syntax is familiar to you if you've done a bit of Haskell. This is going to give us 55 because uh, 1 plus 2 plus, you know, right? Um, now, if I were to fold left, fold right instead of left, it wouldn't really matter because addition is uh, commutative and associative. So it's all same. But to illustrate the difference, what I've done, I've got a little function, B, those are both strings, like car, you know, string of car, sorry, list of characters, two list of character, two list of characters, meaning string to string to string. And it's just going to um, build a little string of a sort of more mathematical expression with an infix operator. So I think I've run it, I've run it already. If I do, so let me show you, it's just gonna be simpler. If I do F12, which I count, if I do F1 as a string, two as a string, it's gonna give me a sort of math notation with an infix operator. Let's say my function is hash. My operator is hash. This could be plus, could be divide, could be modulo, right? You get it. So. If I use this, if I'm going to fold left, um, let's say zero as a string, and then, oh yeah, um, I'm going to want, the problem is that, so I can easily generate ranges in Haskell of integers like this, but I'm going to want all of those as a string. So this is where I'm going to use map. I'm going to map show, which is uh, essentially casting as a string um, to this range, to one, 10. Right. To make things simpler, I'm going to keep that in a variable, right? List equal map show one to ten. Two dots ten. Right. I now have a list. Let's go back. I'm going to fold left. My function, right? Which just prints this uh, one, you know, a hash b when you feed a and b. My function zero, and then my list, right? Which is uh, numbers from one to ten as a string. Let's see what this gives me. An absolute crash. Uh, sorry, of course. No, no, no. I can save this. It's it's all part of the process, right? It's fine to get it wrong. That's how you learn. So I wanted my zero as a string. And now look at that. So what is done is like you're taking a list and you're doing the operation, but you have to use you have to use some kind of order of precedence. So if we were to fold right, again zero L. Hmm. Yeah, of course, I need a function. But let me just, I want, I want them like next to each other. So let's fold left, the one I did, fold left, F, string zero, and my list of strings, right. That's fold L, fold R, fold to the right, F, zero. Now, that's not gonna be appropriate in that instance. We may want 11 because not only do we fold to the right, but my accumulator, my pivot, my the additional element I pass is the sort of tail of the list now. Uh, now, if this was a sum, it doesn't matter because it's zero, um, but you know, you you in that instance, I may want to instead do fold R to be sort of more, to have a thing nice and in line, 11 and then L. Right? Um, now, I can have even more fun. This was for the infix notation. Let's have a, a more a prefix notation. So again, uh, type-wise, it's the same, right? String, uh, two strings into one. But because of currying and function application, right? It's a string into a string, string, string. And P, A, B is equal to, and so in prefix notation, it was something like my function, bracket, and then concat, a, it's going to come in as a string, so I'm fine. And then blah, blah, concat a comma, right? And then b, b, and then a close bracket. If I do this, let's run this in. So p for prefix, p one two. 
function one and two. So now if I want to see how your fold looks like uh, when you you sort of, if, you, if it were if it were a function that works with NAND notation. So for instance, modulo, you kind of do one modulo two, but you could fold a maximum, right? That's the way of applying something, a binary function onto a whole list. Uh, and you would never, you would not notate A max B. You would notate max A of, between A and B. And then, oh, um, I need, oh, I need my cheeky variable again. Oh, can I do it in in lines? Just brackets. I'm going to map show to a range. Very Haskellic. God, this is this is it. It didn't work. Okay, let's put put in a variable. I've, I've got I've, I I I have overextended. Um, it happens. I got I've grown overconfident and perhaps cocky. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. It's just because I've forgotten the function. Actually, I'm sure it would have worked. I'm just getting so nervous because this is intimidating to me to believe it or not. Brah. Yes. I've not chosen the side of my. Okay. So I'm just ashamed of my console. I'm going to clear it. Right. No. So what I wanted to show you in prefix notation, one and two. It's going to return that string of that prefix notation of my function of one and two. So if I were to fold, let's not forget things, fold to the left, the function, which is called P for prefix, a string zero, and then I'm going to have this in line, map, show, one to ten. Boop. Close bracket. Here it is. So this is what it would be like if you're using prefix notation, which is a bit messy, but this is, and that's recursion, right? You get that sort of hall of mirrors nesting sense. So uh, the I'll put the link to this REPL in the description, and then you can play around with it. Uh, now for the theory. Yeah, we still got we still got a bit of time. Stay on for the theory. So what does? Uh, gosh, I've forgotten his name already. Miran, what does Miran from Learn You a Haskell from Great Good has to say about folds? Well, okay, so I can say, uh, of course, back then, jiggle, jiggle. To be honest, was a thing because that's, uh, but there was a little known bit of Louis Ferru's Weird Weekend, so he was one for only folds and horses, which is which is cool. I dig that. Right. So you need to kind of have seen a bit how recursion works, and we're we're in the middle of the higher order functions, right? So like we take that things like map already at least vaguely, you know, if not known, at least you've been exposed to it. Uh, so recursion, you get an edge case for the empty list. We introduce this pattern sort of head and tail uh, because, you know, colon is the um, append at the, at the front prepend operator. And then some action involves a single element in the rest of the list, right? It's often like that. So this is what we're doing um, with fold. It takes a binary function that could be an operator, right? So in that notation, this is much more of a binary function in in fold l f all of the above it's much more of an operator in terms of like how you write it again i'm just trying to kind of make visible the mechanisms that happen when you use a fold function right uh Parameter, a starting value or accumulator I've sometimes called the pivot accumulator is helpful because if like your hash in that instance, your operator is a plus. You can see this is the first value. It starts empty. You add the one. You've got this accumulator. You've built a one. You add the two in. Now you've got three in there. You add the three. That takes it up to six and so on. But accumulator isn't relevant if you're doing a minimum. So but let's, let's roll with it. Um, oof. Right. Binary function is called with the accumulator and the first or last element to produce a new accumulator. Again, it's like that. If you fold it to the, oh, wow, okay, why not? If we'll fold it to the right, F0, map show one. It gets a bit annoying to have to do it every time. I wanted to show off, but I should put that in a variable. Not done it. Uh, uh. Interesting. That was working a, a second ago, wasn't it? I can sort this out. It's mirrored. We've seen it earlier. Ah, I've cleaned my console now, right? Um, so in that case, we will use the last value that become the accumulator, add the penultimate value, the one before that, and so on. Binary function is called again with the new and new first last elements. Once we've walked over the whole list, the only the accumulator remains, which is what we reduced the list to. So we folded everything into one element. The problem we're trying to solve, right, in my words, would be you have a very nice, say, function of a 
and b that's your binary function and you would like instead to have it applied in a way to f on like a whole massive a b c d e let's not get too crazy because i'm going to need to type some stuff right but you can't because like your f takes two elements it doesn't take a list so how do you deal with that well this is where you fold so if you were to have a b c so if instead of an f okay like this is where the uh, notation the math notation is more useful because Oh, it's just it tells me at five minutes. Um, the math notation, the infix notation is useful because remember, functional programming is just math. So if instead of calling it f, let's call it hash, like f did. So that becomes a hash b. Hmm? If you want to do that over a whole a, b, c, d list, well, intuitively, you would put hashes everywhere. I'll put that at some spaces later on. So we're going to A, Ash, B, C, D, G, G. Ah, you kind of need you. You need to see there's a there's the, and then it becomes the direction in which you read it. So if you just say I'm reading it left to right, you're effectively doing uh, a left fold. But what fold does, being right or, or left, it's copy paste. Excellent. And then uh, change the color. So this is. Oof, right in red and left in lemon yellow. So right, ah, I've, I've started with the weird one. You're going to want brackets here. It's like the, that's the first one. But then also this D and E having become the accumulator, we fold C into it. Then that having become the accumulator, we now fold, I'm going to need to, I'm going to need a bigger boat. I'm going to need a bigger, how do I make that just, just like wider? Uh, where was I? And then I'm about to fold B into it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I've got this. And then you fold A into it. Now, whereas um, uh, lime for left, uh, that's kind of nice. Oof, and a bit bigger as well. To the left, it will be not all the words of. Queen B. Ah, I just want to move this thing. Right. And then I'm with you. This is absolutely not my like second time using whiteboard. Now we fold A into B and then into C. Or more, well, depends which way you word it. Or we fold D into it and then it becomes that. And that's your left one. Right. This is fold and this is what this little F function. Uh, makes much more explicit. So let's do it again. Fold L. Okay, no, I'm not going to fold for it again. L is the map of show to the range from one to ten. And then one, let's make that one to five because that gets a bit, a bit much. Right. And now I want to fold to the left F with zero, and then oops, and then my list. When if I want to fold to the right F and zero and again my list that's like that but if you prefer the doesn't have no this doesn't have it if you prefer the prefix notation p for prefix hmm, it's ah, almost there i could have done the perfect run i want to fall to the left first p zero l whereas if you were to fall to the right with the prefix notation it would look somewhat like this, and that's fold. 